Old Irish, Old Irish, Goidelk, Irish, Sean Gaelga, Scottish Gaelic, Sean Gedlig, Manx, Shen Yernish, sometimes called Old Gaelic, is the name given to the oldest form of the Goidelic languages for which extensive written texts are extant. It was used from c.600 to c.900. The primary contemporary texts are dated c.700 to 850. By 900, the language had already transitioned into Early Middle Irish. Some Old Irish texts date from the 10th century, although these are presumably copies of texts composed at an earlier time period. Old Irish is thus forebear to modern Irish, Manx, and Scottish Gaelic. Old Irish is known for having a particularly complex system of morphology and especially of allomorphy, more or less unpredictable variations in stems and suffixes in differing circumstances, as well as a complex sound system involving grammatically significant consonant mutations to the initial consonant of a word. Apparently, neither characteristic was present in the preceding primitive Irish period, though initial mutations likely existed in a non-grammaticalized form in the prehistoric era. Much of the complex allomorphy was subsequently lost, but the sound system has been maintained with little change in the modern languages. Contemporary Old Irish scholarship is still greatly influenced by the works of a small number of scholars active in the late 19th and early 20th centuries such as Rudolf Thurnesen (1857–1940) and Osborne Bergen (1873–1950). Topic: Notable characteristics. Notable characteristics of Old Irish compared with other Old Indo-European languages, are Initial mutations, including lenition, nasalization and aspiration, gemination. A complex system of verbal allomorphy. A system of conjugated prepositions that is unusual in Indo-European languages although they are found in many Semitic languages such as Arabic, dim, from me, dit, from you, de, from him, d, from her. Diib from them basic preposition d from there is a great deal of allomorphy here as well infixed object prepositions which are inserted between the verb stem and its prefix s if a verb lacks any prefixes a dummy prefix is normally added special verbal conjugations are used to signal the beginning of a relative clause old irish also preserves most aspects of the complicated proto-indo-european system of morphology Nouns and adjectives are declined in three genders masculine, feminine, neuter, three numbers singular, dual, plural, and five cases nominative, vocative, accusative, dative and genitive. Most pi noun stem classes are maintained o, yo, a, ya, i, u, r, n, s, and consonant stems. Most of the complexities of pi verbal conjugation are also maintained, and there are new complexities introduced by various sound changes see below. Topic. Classification Old Irish was the only member of the Goidelic, Gaelic branch of the Celtic languages, which is, in turn, a subfamily of the wider Indo-European language family that also includes the Slavonic, Italic, Romance, Indo-Aryan and Germanic subfamilies, along with several others. Old Irish is the ancestor of all modern Goidelic languages, modern Irish, Scottish Gaelic and Manx. A still older form of Irish is known as Primitive Irish. Fragments of Primitive Irish, mainly personal names, are known from inscriptions on stone written in the Oam alphabet. The inscriptions date from about the 4th to the 6th centuries. Primitive Irish appears to have been very close to Common Celtic, the ancestor of all Celtic languages, and it had a lot of the characteristics of other archaic Indo-European languages. Sources. Relatively little survives in the way of strictly contemporary sources. They are represented mainly by shorter or longer glosses on the margins or between the lines of religious Latin manuscripts, most of them preserved in monasteries in Germany, Italy, Switzerland, France and Austria, having been taken there by early Irish missionaries. Whereas in Ireland, many of the older manuscripts appear to have been worn out through extended and heavy use, their counterparts on the continent were much less prone to the same risk because once they ceased to be understood, they were rarely consulted. The earliest Old Irish passages may be the transcripts found in the Cambrai homily, which is thought to belong to the early 8th century. The Book of Armagh contains texts from the early 9th century. 
Important continental collections of glosses from the 8th and 9th century include the Würzburg glosses mainly on the Pauline epistles, the Milan glosses on a commentary to the Psalms and the St. Gall glosses on Priestian's grammar. Further examples are found at Karlsruhe, Germany, Paris, France, Milan, Florence and Turin, Italy. A late 9th century manuscript from the Abbey at Reichenau, now in St. Paul in Carinthia, Austria, contains a spell and four old Irish poems. The Liber Hymenorum and the Stowe Missal date from about 900 to 1050. In addition to contemporary witnesses, the vast majority of old Irish texts are attested in manuscripts of a variety of later dates. Manuscripts of the later Middle Irish period, such as the Labor na Widra and the Book of Leinster, contain texts, which are thought to derive from written exemplars in Old Irish now lost and retain enough of their original form to merit classification as Old Irish. The preservation of certain linguistic forms current in the Old Irish period may provide reason to assume that an Old Irish original directly or indirectly underlies the transmitted text or texts. Phonology Topic. Consonants The consonant inventory of Old Irish is shown in the chart below. The complexity of Old Irish phonology is from a four-way split of phonemes inherited from Primitive Irish, with both a fortis lenis and a broad slender, velarized versus palatalized distinction arising from historical changes. The sounds, fv theta, x, h v n l r, are the broad lenus equivalents of broad fortis, p b t d k, s m n l r, likewise for the slender palatalized equivalents. However, most, f f, sounds actually derive historically from, with. Some details of Old Irish phonetics are not known. s, may have been pronounced, or, as in modern Irish. h, may have been the same sound as, h, or, x. The precise articulation of the fortis sonorants, n, n, l, l, r, r, is unknown, but they were probably longer, tenser and generally more strongly articulated than their lenus counterparts, n, n, l, l, r, r, as in the modern Irish and Scottish dialects that still possess a four-way distinction in the coronal nasals and laterals. n, and, l, may have been pronounced, and, respectively. The difference between, r, and, r, may have been that the former were trills while the latter were flaps. Per meter, and, v, were derived from an original fortis lenus pair. Topic. Vowels Old Irish had distinctive vowel length in both monophthongs and diphthongs. Short diphthongs were monomoric, taking up the same amount of time as short vowels, while long diphthongs were bimoric, the same as long vowels. This is much like the situation in Old English but different from Ancient Greek whose shorter and longer diphthongs were bimoric and trimoric, respectively, i, versus, i. The inventory of Old Irish long vowels changed significantly over the Old Irish period, but the short vowels changed much less. The following short vowels existed, one the short diphthong O may have existed very early in the Old Irish period, but not later on. Archaic Old Irish before about 750 had the following inventory of long vowels, one both, E, and, E, were normally written A but must have been pronounced differently because they have different origins and distinct outcomes in later Old Irish. E, stems from Proto-Celtic asterisk E to a similar distinction may have existed between O, and, O, both written O, and stemming respectively from former diphthongs asterisk E U, asterisk O, asterisk O, and from compensatory lengthening. However, in later Old Irish both sounds appear usually as UA, sometimes as O, and it is unclear whether, O, existed as a separate sound any time in the Old Irish period. 3 o, existed only in early archaic Old Irish C. or earlier, afterwards it merged into o. Neither sound occurred before another consonant, and both sounds became o in later Old Irish often u or u before another vowel. The late o does not develop into ua, suggesting that o greater than o post dated o greater than ua. Later Old Irish had the following inventory of long vowels, one early Old Irish, i, and oi, merged in later Old Irish. It is unclear what the resulting sound was, as scribes continued to use both i and oi to indicate the merged sound. The choice of oi, in the table above is somewhat arbitrary. The distribution of short vowels in unstressed syllables is a little complicated. All short vowels may appear in absolutely final position at the very end of a word after both broad and slender consonants. 
The front vowels, e, and, i, are often spelled a and i after broad consonants, which might indicate a retracted pronunciation here, perhaps something like an. All ten possibilities are shown in the following examples. The distribution of short vowels in unstressed syllables, other than when absolutely final, was quite restricted. It is usually thought that there were only two allowed phonemes written a, i, e, or i depending on the quality of surrounding consonants and u, written u or o. The phoneme u tended to occur when the following syllable contained an asterisk u in Proto Celtic, for example, deligud, dlu, la, dat, book, domin, dovin, world. The phoneme occurred in other circumstances. The occurrence of the two phonemes was generally unrelated to the nature of the corresponding Proto Celtic vowel, which could be any monophthong, long or short. Long vowels also occur in unstressed syllables. However, they rarely reflect proto-Celtic long vowels, which were shortened prior to the deletion syncope of inner syllables. Rather, they originate in one of the following ways, from the late resolution of a hiatus of two adjacent vowels usually as a result of loss of asterisk s between vowels, from compensatory lengthening in response to loss of a consonant senel kindred, gender. I have purchased buys, from assimilation of an unstressed vowel to a corresponding long stressed vowel, from late compounding, from lengthening of short vowels before unlinited per meter, n, l, r, still in progress in Old Irish compare arindem highest versus rind peak. Topic stress Stress is generally on the first syllable of a word. However, in verbs it occurs on the second syllable when the first syllable is a clitic the verbal prefix is in as beer, as ber, he says. In such cases, the unstressed prefix is indicated in grammatical works with a following center dot. Topic orthography As with most medieval languages, the orthography of Old Irish is not fixed, so the following statements are to be taken as generalizations only. Individual manuscripts may vary greatly from these guidelines. The Old Irish alphabet consists of the following 18 letters of the Latin alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, L, M, N, O, P, R, S, T, U, I. In addition, the acute accent and the superdot are used as diacritics with certain letters. The acute accent indicates a long vowel. The following are long vowels, A, A, I, O, U. The superdot indicates the lenition of f and s, f is silent, s is pronounced, h, the superdot is also sometimes used on m and n, with no change in pronunciation, when these letters are used to mark the nasal mutation, m, n, some digraphs are also used, the letter i is placed after a vowel letter to indicate that the following consonant was palatalized, i, a, oi, ui, i, a, oi, ui the letter h is placed after c, t, p to indicate a fricative, ch, th, ph the diphthongs are also indicated by digraphs, a, i, ia, ui, o, o, oi, ua, ev, o, u, o. Youth following table indicates the broad pronunciation of various consonant letters in various environments. Notes, a dash, in an entry indicates that the respective consonant sound is spelled differently under the respective mutation lenition or nasalization and so the indicated consonant letter does not occur then the spelling c does not occur in a leniting environment, instead, ch, x, does. See the next two entries. Lenited C, P, T are spelled CH, X, PH, F, TH, Theta, respectively. Nasalized B, D, G are spelled MB, MB, ND, ND, NG, N, respectively. In some cases, lenited F and S are spelled with a superdot. When initial S stemmed from primitive Irish asterisk SW, its lenited version is F written and pronounced. The slender palatalized variants of the above consonants occur in the following environments, before a written E, A, I, I, after a written I, when not followed by a vowel letter but not after the diphthongs I, OI, UI. Although Old Irish has both a sound, H, and a letter H, there is no consistent relationship between the two. Vowel initial words are sometimes written with an unpronounced h, especially if they are very short the preposition i in was sometimes written high or if they need to be emphasized the name of Ireland, Ariu, was sometimes written Ariu. On the other hand, words that begin with the sound, h, are usually written without it, are, a ho r, her gold. If the sound and the spelling co-occur, it is by coincidence, as ni head, n i he, it is not. After a vowel or l, n, or r the letters c, p, t can stand for either voiced or voiceless stops, they can also be written double with either value. 
Geminate consonants appear to have existed at the beginning of the Old Irish period but were simplified by the end, as is generally reflected by the spelling generally although double ll, m, n, n, r, r were eventually repurposed to indicate nonlinited variants of those sounds in certain positions. After a vowel the letters b, d, g stand for the fricatives, v, or their slender equivalents. After m, b is a stop, but after d, l and r, it is a fricative. After n and r, d is a stop. After n, l, and r, g is usually a stop, but it is a fricative in a few words. After vowels m is usually a fricative, but sometimes a nasal stop, in which case it is also often written double. The digraphs ch, ph, th do not occur in word initial position except under lenition, but wherever they occur, they are pronounced x, f, theta. The letters L, N, and R are generally written double when they indicate the tense sonorants, single when they indicate the lax sonorants. Originally, it reflected an actual difference between single and geminate consonants, as tense sonorants in many positions such as between vowels or word finally developed from geminates. As the gemination was lost, the use of written double consonants was repurposed to indicate tense sonorants. Doubly written consonants of this sort do not occur in positions where tense sonorants developed from non-geminated proto-Celtic sonorants such as word initially or before a consonant. Written vowels a, i, e, i and post-stressed syllables except absolutely word finally all seem to represent phonemic. The particular vowel that appears is determined by the quality broad versus slender of the surrounding consonants and has no relation to the etymological vowel quality. It seems likely that spelling variations reflected allophonic variations in the pronunciation of Topic. History Old Irish was affected by a series of phonological changes that radically altered its appearance compared with Proto-Celtic and Older Celtic languages such as Gaulish, which still had the appearance of typical early Indo-European languages such as Latin or Ancient Greek. The changes were such that Irish was not recognized as Indo-European at all for much of the 19th century. The changes must have happened quite rapidly, perhaps in only one or two hundred years around 500 to 600, because almost none of the changes are visible in primitive Irish 4th to 6th centuries, and all of them are already complete in archaic Old Irish 8th century. A capsule summary of the most important changes is in approximate order. Syllable final asterisk n from pi asterisk m asterisk n assimilated to the following phoneme, even across word boundaries in the case of syntactically connected words. Voiceless stops became voiced, asterisk m p asterisk n t asterisk n k greater than, b d. Voiced stops became prenasalized, b, to the power of n d. They were reduced to simple nasals during the Old Irish period. Before a vowel, n, was attached to the beginning of the syllable. Lenition of all single consonants between vowels. That applied across word boundaries in the case of syntactically connected words. Stops became fricatives. Asterisk s became h, later lost unless the following syllable was stressed. Asterisk w was eventually lost much later. Asterisk m became a nasalized continuant, w, perhaps w, or Asterisk L asterisk N asterisk R remained, but the non-lenited variants were strengthened to LNR, see phonology section above. Extensive umlaut affection of short vowels, which were raised or lowered to agree with the height of following proto-Celtic vowels. Similarly, rounding of asterisk A to O, or U, often occurred adjacent to labial consonants. Palatalization of all consonants before front vowels. Loss of part or all of final syllables. Loss of most interior vowels syncope, they led to the following effects. Both the palatalized, slender, and lenited variants of consonants were phomicized, multiplying the consonant inventory by four broad, broad lenited, slender, slender lenited. Variations between broad and slender became an important part of the grammar. In mask, O stems, M-A-C-C, son. Nam, ACC, versus MAICC, Gen, Cole, Back, Nam, ACC, versus Queel, Gen, CF, Latinus, Nam, Um, ACC, versus I, Gen, In Fem, A stems, Tuath, Tribe, People, Nam, versus Tuath, ACC, Dat, MUCC, Pig, Nam, versus MUICC, ACC, Dat, 
In R stems, Ather, Father, Gen, versus ATH, a IR, NOM, ACC. DAT. Lenition and nasal assimilation across word boundaries in syntactically connected words produced extensive Sandy effects. Irish initial mutations. The variations became an important part of the grammar. Both umlaut vowel affection and especially syncope radically increased the amount of allomorphy found across declensions and conjugations. The most dramatic deviations are due to syncope, compare as barat, they say, versus ni ipre, they do not say, or du rosk, a i, he surpasses, versus ni drskagi, he does not surpass, where the stressed syllable is boldfaced. Topic. Examples of changes The following are some examples of changes between Primitive Irish and Old Irish. Topic. Allomorphy These various changes, especially syncope, produced quite complex allomorphy, because the addition of prefixes or various preverbal particles proclitics in Proto-Celtic changed the syllable containing the stress. According to the Celtic variant of Wackernagel's law, the stress fell on the second syllable of the verbal complex, including any prefixes and clitics. By the Old Irish period, most of this allomorphy still remained, although it was rapidly eliminated beginning in the Middle Irish period. Among the most striking changes are in prefixed verbs with or without pre-verbal particles. With a single prefix and without a proclitic, stress falls on the verbal root, which assumes the deuterotonic second stressed form. With a prefix and also with a proclitic, stress falls on the prefix, and the verb assumes the prototonic first stressed form. Rather extreme allomorphic differences can result. The following table shows how these forms might have been derived. The most extreme allomorphy of all came from the third person singular of the S subjunctive because an athematic person marker T was used, added directly onto the verbal stem formed by adding S directly onto the root. That led to a complex word final cluster, which was deleted entirely. In the prototonic form, after two proclitics, the root was unstressed and thus the root vowel was also deleted, leaving only the first consonant. Topic syncope in detail In more detail, syncope of final and intervocalic syllables involved the following steps in approximate order, shortening of absolutely final long vowels. Loss of most final consonants, including asterisk m, asterisk n, asterisk d, asterisk t, asterisk k, and all clusters involving asterisk s except asterisk rs, asterisk ls, where only the asterisk s is lost. Loss of absolutely final short vowels including those that became final as a result of loss of a final consonant and original long final vowels. Shortening of long vowels in unstressed syllables. Collapsing of vowels in hiatus producing new unstressed long vowels. Syncope deletion of vowels in every other interior unstressed syllable following the stress. If there are two remaining syllables after the stress, the first one loses its vowel. If there are four remaining syllables after the stress, the first and third lose their vowel. Resolution of impossible clusters resulting from syncope and final vowel deletion, adjacent homorganic obstruents where either sound was a fricative became a geminate stop, voiceless if either sound was voiceless e.g. asterisk, asterisk d asterisk d greater than, d d, asterisk theta eth asterisk eth theta asterisk theta d asterisk t theta etc. Greater than, t t. Otherwise, adjacent obstruents assumed the voicing of the second consonant, e.g. asterisk dt greater than tt, asterisk kd greater than gd, asterisk t greater than xt. Asterisk l asterisk r asterisk n not adjacent to a vowel became syllabic and then had a vowel inserted before them, e.g. domin world sin present disyllabic. Remaining impossible clusters were generally simplified by deletion of consonants not adjacent to vowels such as between other consonants. However, Old Irish tolerated geminates adjacent to other consonants as well other quite complex clusters, a-i-n-m, and m, name, one syllable, f-e-d-b, f-e eth beta, widow, do a datar, do a eth beta eth dir, they are shown. Topic Proto-Celtic short vowels, vowel affection All five Proto-Celtic short vowels asterisk a, asterisk e, asterisk i, asterisk o, asterisk u survived into Primitive Irish more or less unchanged in stressed syllables. However, during the run-up to Old Irish, several mutations umlauts take place. Former vowels are modified in various ways depending on the following vowels or sometimes surrounding consonants. 
The mutations are known in Celtic literature as affections or infections such as these, the most important ones, I affection, short asterisk E and asterisk O are raised to I and U when the following syllable contains a high vowel asterisk I, asterisk I, asterisk U, asterisk U. It does not happen when the vowels are separated by certain consonant groups. A affection, short asterisk I and asterisk U are lowered to E and O when the following syllable contains a non-high back vowel asterisk A, asterisk A, asterisk O, asterisk O, U affection, short asterisk A, asterisk E, asterisk I are broken to short diphthongs O, E, U, U when the following syllable contains a asterisk U or asterisk U that was later lost. It is assumed that at the point the change operated, U vowels that were later lost were short asterisk U while those that remain were long asterisk U. The change operates after I affection so original asterisk E may end up as U. Nominal examples reconstructed forms are primitive Irish unless otherwise indicated, sin old nominative singular old genitive singular old dative singular old accusative plural fair man nominative singular man genitive singular man dative singular men accusative plural nert strength nominative singular but nert strength dative singular mil honey I affection sweet fire miracle nominative singular miracle nominative plural the result of I affection and a affection is that it is often impossible to distinguish whether the root vowel was originally asterisk e or asterisk i. Send topic Proto Celtic long vowels and diphthongs Proto Celtic long vowels and diphthongs develop in stressed syllables as follows. The Old Irish diphthongs ui, ev, u stem from earlier sequences of short vowels separated by asterisk w, e.g. druid, druid, tree knower. Most instances of A and O in non-archaic Old Irish are due to compensatory lengthening of short vowels before lost consonants or to the merging of two short vowels in hiatus, say, KED, hundred topic pi consonants topic Overview See Proto-Celtic for various changes that occurred in all the Celtic languages, but these are the most important, pi asterisk G greater than Proto-Celtic asterisk B, but pi asterisk G greater than asterisk G. Loss of aspiration in asterisk b asterisk d asterisk g asterisk g. Loss of asterisk p. Initially and intervocalically it was simply deleted, elsewhere, it variously became asterisk w, asterisk b, asterisk x etc. from Proto-Celtic to Old Irish. The most important changes are these, lenition and palatalization, multiplying the entire set of consonants by four. See hashtag history for more details. Loss of most final consonants. See hashtag syncope in detail. Proto-Celtic asterisk s is lenited to h, which then disappears between vowels. In general, Old Irish s when not word initial stems from earlier geminate ss often still written as such, especially in archaic sources. Proto-Celtic asterisk k asterisk g remain in ogham Irish maki sun gen sg, but become simple cg in Old Irish. Occasionally, they leave their mark by rounding the following vowel. Proto-Celtic asterisk W is lost early on between vowels, followed by early hiatus resolution. In some cases, asterisk W combines with a preceding vowel to form a diphthong, bayu bayo living, alive. Man, lordship, bull, widow, sister, two, sister, proto-Celtic asterisk Y becomes asterisk immediately after a consonant, much as in Latin. The vowel asterisk I often survives before a lost final vowel, partly indicating the nature of the final vowel as a result of vowel affection, cried criti critiu heart, nom, gen. Dat, topic initial clusters Old Irish preserves, intact, most initial clusters unlike many other Indo-European languages. Preserved initial clusters, SNSMR senior SLSCSCRSCL, e.g. SNAM swimming, SMIOR marrow, SRU stream, SCATH shadow, reflection, SCRISID he scratches out, SCLEO misery, CRCLCN, e.g. Crew blood, cloth fame, canoe nut, GRGLGN, e.g. Grian sun, clay clear, nath customary. TRTLTN, e.g. Trom, heavy, to latched, garment, TNF, jealousy, passion, Dr. DL, e.g. Dringed, he climbs, D. Long, a, id, he cleaves, Mr. ML, e.g. MRUIG, land, Maliate, milch, BRBL, e.g. Brew, belly, blath, flower, modified initial clusters, asterisk WL, asterisk WR, greater than Florida FR, e.g. Flaith, lordship, Heather, asterisk SP, asterisk SW, greater than S, lenited F, e.g. Seor, sister, Sister, Leonided Fior, Asterisk Street greater than T, e.g. Tiagu, I go, Asterisk Place Asterisk PR lose the Asterisk P. 
Pi asterisk Gn greater than Proto Celtic asterisk Bn greater than Minnesota, e.g. Emna woman, Gen, Sg. Topic intervocalic clusters Many intervocalic clusters are reduced, becoming either a geminate consonant or a simple consonant with compensatory lengthening of the previous vowel. During the Old Irish period, geminates are reduced to simple consonants, occurring earliest when adjacent to a consonant. By the end of the Old Irish period, written LLMNNRR are repurposed to indicate the non lenited sounds, LMNR, when occurring after a vowel and not before a consonant. Cluster reduction involving asterisk n, asterisk nt, asterisk nk greater than unlenited, dg, normally written tc. Note that PCELT asterisk ant, asterisk ant greater than asterisk ant greater than, ed, but asterisk int asterisk ont asterisk unt greater than, idd odd ud, like asterisk nk, say, ked, hundred way he reaches. Must, o, tokad, toa, luck versus. Brett tonkid fate. Asterisk ns greater than unlenited s with compensatory lengthening of a preceding vowel, asterisk ans greater than asterisk ens greater than s similarly to asterisk ant asterisk ank, jays swan goose, cluster reduction involving asterisk s asterisk z, medial asterisk sm asterisk sn asterisk sl greater than m n n l l, m m i am medially, asterisk street greater than ss but asterisk str greater than str, asterisk rst greater than rt. Asterisk ZB greater than DB, V, asterisk ZG greater than DG, but RG after an unstressed syllable, asterisk ZD greater than, DD, net, ned, nest. Leonided stops asterisk x asterisk asterisk theta asterisk generally disappear before sonorants asterisk r asterisk l asterisk n asterisk m, with compensatory lengthening of the preceding vowel. Many examples occur in reduplicated preterites or words with consonant final prefixes such as ad, do air sure I have purchased qual a e he heard a rom number m tham a moving to and fro. He drives and compound do aig, doll assembly he perforates. Goat shame cf. Welsh mefl. Topic grammar Old Irish is a fusional, nominative accusative, and vso language. Nouns decline for five cases, nominative, accusative, genitive, prepositional, vocative, three genders, masculine, feminine, neuter, three numbers, singular, dual, plural. Adjectives agree with nouns in case, gender, and number. The prepositional case is called the dative by convention. Verbs conjugate for three tenses, past, present, future, three aspects, simple, perfective, imperfective, four moods, indicative, subjunctive, conditional, imperative, two voices, active, and passive, independent, and dependent forms, and simple, and complex forms. Verbs display tense, aspect, mood, voice, and sometimes portmanteau forms through suffixes, or stem vowel changes for the former four. Proclitics form a verbal complex with the core verb, and the verbal complex is often preceded by preverbal particles such as ni negative marker, in interrogative marker, ro perfective marker. Direct object personal pronouns are infixed between the proverb and the verbal stem. Verbs agree with their subject in person and number. A single verb can stand as an entire sentence. Emphatic particles such as saw and say are affixed to the end of the verb. Prepositions inflect for person and number, and different prepositions govern different cases, sometimes depending on the semantics intended. Topic see also Early Irish Literature Dictionary of the Irish Language Oricep na en eches goidelic substrate hypothesis Topic Notes Topic References Topic Bibliography Beeks, Robert 1995. Comparative Indo-European Linguistics, An Introduction. Fortson, Benjamin W., IV. 2004. Indo-European Language and Culture, An Introduction. Green, Antony Old Irish Verbs and Vocabulary. Somerville, Massachusetts, Cascadilla Press. ISBN 1-57473-003-7. Green, David The Growth of Palatalization in Old Irish. Transactions of the Philological Society. 72 1, 127-136. Doi 10.1111/j.1467-968x.1973.1 1973.tb0117x Cortland, Frederick Herman Henri 2007 Italo-Celtic Origins and the Prehistory of the Irish Language Leiden Studies in Indo-European 14 Rodopi ISBN 9042021772 
Lehman, R. P. M., W. P. Lehman, 1975. An Introduction to Old Irish. New York, Modern Language Association of America. ISBN 0 87352 289 3. Matasovic, Ranko. 2011. Problems in the Reconstruction of Proto Celtic. PDF. Pavia Summer School in Indo European Linguistics. McCone, Kim. 1987. The Early Irish Verb. Maynooth, and Sagart. ISBN 1 870684 001. McCone, Kim. 2005. A First Old Irish Grammar and Reader. Maynooth, Department of Old and Middle Irish, National University of Ireland. ISBN 0-901519-36-7. O'Connell, Frederick William 1912. A Grammar of Old Irish. Belfast, Maine, Boyd and Son. Quinn, E. G. Old Irish Workbook. Dublin, Royal Irish Academy. ISBN 0-901714-08-9. Ring, Don From Proto-Indo-European to Proto-Germanic. Zeeler, Andrew New Comparative Grammar of Greek and Latin. Oxford University Press. Stifter, David. 2006. Sengoidelk, Old Irish for Beginners. Syracuse, New York, Syracuse University Press. ISBN 0 8156 3072 7. Strawn, John. 1949. Old Irish Paradigms and Selections from the Old Irish Glosses. Revised by Osborne Bergen. 4th ed. Dublin, Royal Irish Academy. ISBN 0 901714 35 6. Thurnison, Rudolf. A Grammar of Old Irish. Translated by D. A. Binchy and Osborne Bergen. Dublin, Dublin Institute for Advanced Studies. ISBN 1 86one 6. Tigus, Vim, Fiergal o Bayara. An Old Irish Primer. Nijmegen, Stichting Uite Beverage de Keltische Drach. ISBN 90-806863-5-2. Topic external links An etymological dictionary of the Gaelic language McBain, Alexander Gayerm Publications, 1982 Old Irish Dictionary Old Irish Online from the University of Texas at Austin. Edel Digital edition of the Dictionary of the Irish Language.